electric vehicles freezing up in Chicago, windmills freezing, I think in Texas a few years ago, a lot of boondoggles in the green industry. And it's all part of the green news scam. This is a topic that Jim Rickards has been on top of. In fact, he coined the phrase green news scam. And I've got to say, we've recently heard President Trump using the same phrase. So Jim, get us caught up with the latest on the green news scam. What's going on and what do people need to know? Now, Trump's out on the campaign trail. Again, he's He's doing country clubs and stuff, uh, just a, a few uh, mile or so from where I'm sitting. Um, Trump is—he has—he has a—you has a, you know—it's like every candidate. I'm not picking on Trump. They have a—they have a stump speech. He gives the same speech over and over. Uh, if you follow these guys, you hear the same thing. But you know, for each audience, it, it's, it's new for the audience. But Trump is continually using the phrase "green new scam." We have to end the green new scam. Stop the green new scam. And then in one speech, he said. Uh, green new scam. I like that. I just invented that. I, I, I like that. I'm going to go with it. Thank you, Mr. President, for the compliment. We invented it. Our team at uh, Strategic Intelligence and our publications, we came up with green new scam. And as far as I know, we're the first ones to use it uh, yeah. two years ago. And we've been using it ever since. So if you're a subscriber and a reader, you know the green, the new green scam from way back because we've been using it for a very long time. The president's now on board. Uh, we take it as a compliment. They always say, uh, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, uh, so we're flattered. Uh, but but you know Trump is Trump, so he he claims that he came up with it, but that's okay. Probably got it from us, but but welcome on board, welcome aboard. Okay, so the green new scam. Uh, well, let me take the other side of it. The, the climate alarmist, the climate cult, is really falling apart. Um, they've had their way for you know twenty years or longer, going back to. Al Gore and uh, an inconvenient truth. And remember that that polar bear was swimming for the last little bit of ice. You know, mm-hmm. by the way, I, I uh, the, the polar bear popu- population is thriving. Um, if you actually look at real scientific data as opposed to Al Gore, um, they polar bears are actually a problem in certain places uh, near the Arctic because there are too many of them. I'm not saying we should hunt polar bears. I'm just saying that they're thriving. They're doing fine. They're not swimming for the last bit of ice. In fact, ice packs are actually building up. I just returned recently from Antarctica. Uh, there are no polar bears in Antarctica, but there are uh, you know, seals and whales and penguins and uh, lots of other interesting wildlife. And all I can tell you is plenty of ice, plenty of icebergs. The wildlife are thriving. Everything's fine in Antarctica. All this stuff here is really just nonsense. But, but now it's getting more support from the scientific community because they were intimidated. They were, you know, you were told, uh, that if you didn't agree with the climate alarm, climate cult, you were not going to get research grants. Your articles were not going to be published. You would not get tenure in you know an academic setting. You would be ridiculed. You would not be invited to you know present alternative views. You would basically be run off the road in terms of your professional career, your your academic career. That's changing. There was uh, changing fast. There were sixteen hundred and counting signatories to a petition uh that uh, just said um or you know a manifesto or whatever you want to call it they just said there is no climate crisis there is no existential crisis it deserves more study nobody was trying to be you know unscientific about it but the best evidence was that this was simply not a problem and there's almost no evidence that co2 is a problem i mean maybe you can detect a slight increase in CO2, but number but number one, that's not unusual. It was been it's been much higher in the past. Number two, CO2 is a good thing. CO2 is plant food. A plant absorbs CO2 through photosynthesis, puts out oxygen. We humans breathe oxygen. So the human plant life, or I'll say animals in general, but you know it's it's a single out humans. The human plant life thing is a cycle. We take in oxygen and produce CO2. Plants take in CO2 and produce oxygen. It works for everybody. If you get rid of CO2, you're going to kill the plant life and we're going to starve to death. So I, I would say there's a case for maybe more CO2, but um, but there's no evidence that it causes climate change. Now, what does cause climate change? Because climates do change. I mean, you can't, you can't say there's no climate change. Climates change all the time. You had the Roman warm period. You had the medieval warm period. I mean, the Vikings were growing grapes in Greenland. Uh, today it's all covered in ice, by the way. But in uh, 1000 AD, they were growing grapes in England. Oh, sorry, in Greenland. Um, we had the Little Ice Age, which was the opposite. Ran for several hundred years, but in the 17th century, 
the Thames River in London was frozen solid. You didn't need a bridge. You could walk across the river on the ice. They used to have what they call frost fairs, which is, you know, merchants would set up booths and, uh, and facilities on the ice, and everybody would walk around and buy and sell stuff and, and you know, trade stuff. So that's how cold it was. And now it's, we had a mild warming in the late, um, you know, in, in kind of from the late 80s. Uh, looks like that's reversing, by the way. Well, what drives climate change? Solar cycles, ocean currents, uh, volcanoes, because they put a lot of uh, particles in the air. Um, and then finally, clouds, basically uh, basically moisture in the air. The cloud cover, uh, which does reduce sunlight, is the biggest single factor they can find. None of it has anything to do with CO2. So it is a scam. But the, the good news is that's becoming more and more apparent. Um, yeah. I saw some articles, uh, these poor EV, you know, electronic vehicle, you know, Tesla basically, but not just Tesla. There's a Ford F-150 Lightning truck and a, few, a number of other models out there. But these electronic vehicles in Chicago, I think it was like 20 below zero or something like that. The batteries just die. I mean, it's yeah. not like I, I went too far and I used it up. It's like, no, the battery's dead. They, they maybe have just enough power to get to the charging station. Guess what? When you try to charge a Tesla battery in extreme cold, it won't take the charge. It, it, it won't take the charge. You can sit there for hours. Some people did. Three yeah. hours, no no charge. There was there was a, a lineup. All these cars died. They all had to be towed. So these are electronic vehicles at a charging station waiting to be charged. Couldn't charge them because of the extreme cold. They all had to be towed away. The owners are like, I'm done with this. Get me out of this. I'm going to dump it. I never want to see an electronic vehicle again. That That's anecdotal, but it's real. And that sort of thing is going on. It's making headlines, and people are starting to realize. Um, the biggest victim of all this, I mean, we're talking about trillions of dollars of wasted money, windmill, mm -hmm. offshore windmills, um, uh, solar modules. I mean, these things work to a very limited extent. You know, I have a solar uh, uh, array, a pretty big one, actually, uh, on my farm. Um, they work, but they don't work at night. And solar doesn't work at night. I got news for people. Uh, they don't work on cloudy, really cloudy days. The windmills, uh, when you need them most to generate electricity for heat, they freeze up. In extreme cold temperatures, the blades become very brittle, so they don't want to run them because uh, they could snap off. Uh, you're talking hundreds of millions of dollars of expense. Uh, but the turbines freeze up, so they actually don't work when you need them. And even if they do work, when they work, they don't provide baseline power to the grid. So the whole thing is... Uh, a multi-trillion dollar waste of money. I mean, why don't we just build some more refineries and build some more diesel fire plants and even coal fire plants? Because I mentioned we probably need more CO2. Um, but you can't because of this cult, this climate cult. Biggest victim is Germany. Germany under Angela Merkel spent, when she was chancellor, spent 14 years closing every coal fire plant in Germany, shutting down every nuclear reactor. I think maybe one or two might be left. but uh, And they were relying on cheap, Russian natural gas and oil, mostly natural gas, to power German industry while they went around building all the solar modules and windmills and everything I just described. Um, well, guess what? A little war in Ukraine going on, uh, you know, tragic, but wars of war. They blew up the, they meaning NATO, not, uh, not Russia. NATO blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, Russia, you know, had sanctions imposed on it. Russia fired back by kind of you know, reducing natural gas supplies to a trickle. There's, there's, there's. They've got some. Germany got some substitutes. They bought some LNG from the United States. We seem to be the the LNG industry here seems to be one of the big winners. But you got to build port facilities. You can't just show up with a big, you know, LNG, you know, six hundred foot uh, uh, vessel and unload. You, you need you need port side facilities to be able to do that at scale. So Germany is is deindustrializing. Uh, Germany's in a recession uh, for all of 2023. Their output was down compared to 2022. Looks like that's going to happen again in 2024. You're talking about a two year back to back recession, unemployment going up, uh, and their two biggest industries. They're, Germany is an export powerhouse. They they really make a lot of their GDP from exporting abroad. Two biggest industries are chemicals and automobiles. Guess what? They're both really energy intensive. You need enormous amounts of energy. And even if they can find the energy, it's much more expensive, which makes them non-competitive. So they're starting to outsource. I just bought a German um, sports sedan, really nice car, pretty fast. But uh, 
you know, it's made in Germany, which I insisted on, but I, I learned that the engine was made in Hungary. Well, it's okay. Hungarians are smart and they're, they have quality control. But why is, uh, why is a German auto manufacturer outsourcing their engine production to Hungary? Well, the answer is energy is a lot cheaper in Hungary. And so Germany is in a recession. They're deindustrializing. You cannot turn this around on a dime. Time unless you you know uh, sit down with Russia and, and uh, patch things up and stop supporting the you know, Nazis in Ukraine. So um, it, it's and Germany is the fourth largest economy in the world, and their ratio of exports to GDP is this, uh, for either first or second. They're pretty much tied with China in that regard. So uh, so you're destroying the fourth largest economy in the world. Nice job. Uh, the U.S. is big enough so that we can be really stupid and still be okay but that won't last forever so so the good news is that the green news scam is being revealed uh the things that don't work are being talked about scientists are finally finding their voice there's a lot of research showing that co2 has nothing to do with it so the and this by the way was very apparent in davos they didn't the thing i loved about davos they did not invite greta thunberg you know she's this um, you know, a perpetual scold. Uh, you know, she started as like a 13 year old, she's probably close to 20 at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. she's been like the poster child for the Green News scam. They didn't invite her, like, hey, we're, we're, we're done with you, let's talk about AI, let's talk about making money. They, they didn't want to talk about what we're discussing right now, so there's a lot of good news, but uh, but on the other hand, as long as Biden's in office, uh, the US is still going to be doing this, and it's going to hurt the economy. Uh, the EV story, you got, you were ahead of that. You were talking about it months ago where you were just saying it, cold and EV doesn't, doesn't mix. So it's, it's a crazy story, especially out of Chicago. I'm sure Tesla dealers in Chicago were like, yeah, buy your Teslas, do that. There's probably no <laughs> asterisks that like, oh, if in the winter, you might be in real trouble here if this is your only car or you actually need right. it to function. It's actually um, just quickly, it's actually worse than that. Everything you said is exactly right. But, um, they don't have heaters. I mean, well, they do, but you have to run the heater off the battery like an internal combustion engine. The the engine explodes, it blows up gasoline. It makes a lot of heat. So you just have a little vent to heat the car. In, a, in an electric vehicle, there's no source of heat, so you need a heater run by the battery, which drains the battery even faster, meaning you can't go as far. So the whole thing's a scam. All right, Jim, thanks for the rundown on everything. Again, a lot of moving parts. The Green News scam is huge. It could be a big topic for the 2024 election. And just in general, um, I know taxpayers and a lot of us don't want our money going towards these type of boondoggles. So everyone at home, if you want to hear more updates on this or other things that we're doing here at Paradigm Press or from Jim Rickards, go ahead, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. Everything helps and we appreciate it. We'll see you next time.